Hi, everybody. Thanks for reaching out. I Let's do it. Let's talk about self-storage. This is, this is kind of my jam. This is my favorite thing. So went ahead and kind of put together an outline of what it means to participate in the self-storage industry. We're going to go over four things today, which is one, finding deals, two, vetting deals, three, financing a deal, and then finally, my favorite part, which is managing a storage facility. So let's just dig right into it. And just an intro, my name is Jordan Capper. I'm an ER doctor. I'm a locum stock, full-time real estate investor, Owner of Lantern Light Capital. We're a investment company that focuses heavily on self storage. So again, we find deals, we vet deals, we finance deals. Uh, we'll be having a syndication coming up here shortly, and you'll kind of see why why I'm putting this content out there. I like to be again very transparent with what I do because that's that's the best type of marketing right now. And we'll get into marketing later, but like this is marketing. This is marketing for my self storage company. So, anyways. We'll skip, uh, we'll skip right to it. Finding deals. This is, this is the most important uh, part of the self-storage industry, and I have a self-storage podcast. Uh, I'm here on Facebook. These are kind of the organic types of ways to find deals. So one, organic outreach just with creating tons of awesome content. You check out the, the website right now. We're called investingstorage.com. We rebranded that to Lantern Light Capital. But that website has a lot of content related to self-storage. But the kind of bread and butter of finding deals is cold calling, right? So cold calling, cold outreach, whether that's mailers, calls, you have to find the facilities. You need to find somebody on Fiverr or whatever that can pull a list for you, skip trace those lists, cold call those lists, and then finally close those deals. So one, cold calling, two, organic, three, realtors, right? Like there's realtors out there that understand this game that can try to find pieces of land or maybe self-storage facilities for you. Um, other real estate investors online, I know plenty of awesome doctors and non-doctors that are real estate investors that I've found through my internet travels, if you will, like land wholesalers. I have a friend who's a land wholesaler. I'll shout out here, Mamta. She's an awesome doc that does land wholesaling. It's like, okay, how? what is the synergy there? Well, Mamta's focused on finding tons of land and, you know, finding this undervalued land and then wholesaling it. It's like, well, maybe, you know, or if your wife's a realtor or if you're a wholesaler for RV parks, maybe you find the perfect piece of land or RV park or whatever and you're, you remember me on the back of your mind hey hey and hey maybe we build a self-storage facility or send it to lantern like capital send it to capper and see if there's actually demand in this area so by putting these types of videos out putting these this content out it allows me to allows you guys to understand me and then when that conversation comes like hey i have this property that i'm interested in you kind of already know me right? Don't they call it that parasocial internet relationship? And it really greases the wheels, if you will, uh, to go from parasocial to actual social relationship. Uh, so other investors. Then finally, listing websites. I do my daily rounding. I have, I think, 23 websites listed currently on uh, investingstorage.com. Again, rebranding to Lantern Light Capital shortly. Uh, these websites, Crexy, Gorgian, I'm reading here, LoopNet, Argus, Storage Realty, List Self Storage, just on and on and on. I go every, well, I have my virtual assistant go every single day and basically round on these websites and find uh, deals that may be interesting. And then we filter it through our deal vetting workflow. So stage one, finding deals, uh, skip tracing, uh, find realtors, other investors, organic outreach and organic content, and finally the rounding, then vetting deals. This is this is somewhat complex and it really gets into kind of running the numbers on these things. But the basics, very basics of running a facility is a, a series of questions. And again, I'm using a, a team of virtual assistants to do all of this. And all my VAs are like my employees in a way. These are, this is my team. Uh, I love these guys because they work with us and we've onboarded them and I train them one-on-one -on -one and we've really built them up to, to be managers of facilities, to understand all of this workflow and uh, shout out to Maven Success, uh, well, good friend of mine, Sean. He's a he 
has this company that helps find awesome virtual assistants in uh, Egypt and in the Philippines. So uh, yeah, vetting deals. We have an entire spreadsheet, the basics. One, is there demand? Is there less than eight square foot per capita? And this can all change, right? Ground up development uh, versus buying a facility that already exists. If the facility already exists and you're getting it for cheap enough, some of this stuff goes out the window. But demand, is there less than eight square foot per capita? Is the facility the right size? I personally don't want to buy a facility that's too small because a lot of the heavy lifting goes into the management and the initial, uh, you could say flip or the initial rehab of the facility from a digital aspect and an operational aspect. That operational rehab it is a lot of work and we're good at it, but it's still, no matter what, going to take some legwork. So I don't want a 5,000 square foot facility uh, to go in and have to redo everything. <clears throat> so is it the right size? What's the competitor landscape like? So a competitor analysis. I like to see an area where the competitors are pretty weak sauce, where they haven't claimed their Google business profile, where they uh, don't even have websites. And that's still common in this industry. It's like, I guess that's a thing. Some industries are just really really behind the times and self-storage is one of them. So the competitor landscape, the traffic count, is it in a wetland? Is it uh, in a, um, oh, what the heck is it called now? Is it in uh, a flood zone? Jeez, a wetland, a flood zone, two different things. And then are there value add features? So is there an expensive on-site manager that doesn't need to be there where I can take my team of virtual assistants and my remote team of remote management software and all these uh, remote call center and come in and uh, make an awesome running facility but have it all remotely so I don't have to pay somebody 10 hours a day to sit at a desk for two people that drive into the self-storage facility for per day. Is there a lack of signage? This is in the facility, right? You want the facility to be kind of poorly run because then that's the value add. Lack of signage, lack of internet presence, lack of fence and gating, room for expansion, room to increase rental rates. So all these things. And then finally, the cap rate and valuation. This is the real uh, pro forma, the real under, when they talk about underwriting a deal, this is the real underwriting. There's a lot that goes into that. Uh, and it's also a kind of constantly changing process as uh, cap rates kind of adjust, as interest rates adjust, as the market adjusts. Um, cap rate is just a, <laughs> is a formula, right? And so if you have your net operating income and what the facility's worth, that gives you a cap rate. But like there's a chicken in the egg concept here too. I, I talk about this in one of the blog articles on my website. Like a cap rate is is kind of a secondary number that is a byproduct of the purchase price. So you can't say it's worth, you know, what's a facility worth? Is it worth that cap rate or is it worth the purchase price, you know? And so you try, the long story short is you try to get a, a good estimate of your income, your expenses, understand your loan that, or however you're financing the deal, I should say, and then you underwrite this thing with a bunch of safety built into it. What if we don't lease up how we expect? What if the expenses, and based on our experience, right, we have other facilities, it's like, well, the expenses could go over here, here, here. What is that going to look like? And then you look at those numbers and you say, look, it, and it all comes down to that. Well, I shouldn't say that either. It comes down to the purchase price and the way you finance the deal. And so then you underwrite the thing with the safety built in. Like, mm, that's too aggressive. I don't think we can, uh, or I do think we can get rental rates to this level, but that might be pie in the sky. Let's underwrite this thing, aka run the numbers at a much less aggressive rental rate increase. We can only go up 10% per year. This guy's rental rates are 50% under market value, but let's not say we get that 50% increase in the first year. That's ridiculous. So that's underwriting the deal or analyzing the deal. Then financing the deal. Sorry, this is a 10 minute video already. So, <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the part I love, which is operating the facility. 
So financing the deal, a lot of different ways to do it. Obviously, you can just plop a load of cash on somebody's lap, cash, conventional, SBA, um, two major different types of SBA loans, a little bit to go in there, uh, and then finally syndications. So a lot of different ways that you can fund a syndication, non-accredited investors, accredited investors, family offices. Now we're getting to that kind of pseudo uh, quasi-institutional money, and, and then finally like full uh, blown institutional money. And again, you know, we're experienced with, with that as well. Um, funding these things, like I said, we'll be doing a syndication here shortly, very kind of exciting stuff. And it gets into the whole marketing and this whole internet kind of putting things out there on the internet, a lot to talk about there. It, that's a reason for me having the self storage podcast and um, kind of doing this type of outreach, making this long format video instead of just like a little quick reply on Facebook. Um, I can talk about that more in the future because to me, and, and this just turns into pure musings, but I think that's what a lot of folks want. They see through the, uh, you know, pa even the word passive income, right? It's a little. There's a little bit of a, it's not necessarily a red flag. I think I've said that before. Uh, it, maybe it should be a red flag. Like passive income, that phrase is a red flag in a way. But what I mean by that is there's a lot out there in this passive income. Get, you know, they changed the word get rich quick, right? And they changed it to passive income. They changed it to, um, what are the other ones? You know what I'm talking about. I, I don't pay attention too much to the verbiage of these things anymore. But you know the feel, and some of them are legit. I've even seen like really good syndications that I I know the uh, the owner of the syndication or the guy you know um, that's running the syndication, and they have this kind of vibe to them where it's like, oh, look into oh financial independence. Well, geez, that's the fire movement. But you know, I, I guess it's that these are legitimate phrases, and they've kind of been adopted by some of the scammy ish type um, type community is that is there a community but none of this is a get rich quick scheme and some of the best syndicators that i know that's the kind of content they put out though they put out content well kind of like what i'm doing here which is really saying hey and, and this is the whole playbook right they say hey I do this, 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 and this, and I have all these processes down. And this is exactly how I run a storage facility. This is exactly how I find and underwrite a deal. And then they say, oh, by the way, um, if that seems too much for you, you could syndicate. Um, you look at something like that, and, and I, I like that model. I think that's a, a good model for putting yourself out there on the internet. Sorry, I'm rambling again. I just love to talk about kind of marketing and presentation too, um, and how you, how we all kind of present ourselves in this, this digital landscape, because there's something that you put forward, right? Like putting this video out there is something uniquely special or, you know, there's inherent risk or you want to portray yourself in the right way. I just, I love that whole conversation. So anyways, lots to talk about there with syndicating and, and presenting yourself in that marketing side of it. And then finally, let's get to the last part where I'll really make the video like, you know, three hours long, which is operating a self-storage facility. Look, the basics, because we're at 13 minutes, but the basics are you need a boots on the ground guy. A Blake is what we call him. Shout out to Blake, our best boots on the ground guy. The Blake nomenclature has been adopted nationwide by several different companies as shorthand for an awesome boots on the ground guy that will go out to your facility that is smart, that is capable, that is responsive, and understands like he, a good Blake is oftentimes local and they're not trying to like constantly get you on price because that does matter. Like you're going to have a lot of these little types of uh, issues at a self-storage facility and you want somebody who maybe lives very close and it's not a big hassle to them. Yeah, I'll go out there and, uh, and I'll get that thing fixed up for a good price. And it's like that understanding, you know, with Blake, I can send him out like, we go fix this and then just send me the bill. Like I trust Blake absolutely inherently um, with, with fixing my facility. So that's amazing to have. And the effort that goes into finding a good Blake is huge. So boots on the ground guy, uh, to a customer relationship, uh, manager, AKA an actual facility manager. These are all of our virtual assistants, our virtual employees, sorry, our digital employees. 
These guys are awesome too. I've personally uh, trained and vetted every single one of them. Uh, and again, shout out to Maven Success for finding these, these folks. Storage management software. We use ESS. There's a lot of alternatives. Um, the bookkeeping, the accounting, two different things, right? Daily bookkeeping. God help me. I don't like it. The accounting, something different. File maintenance and organizational type stuff. I love this. This is huge. Um, the actual business organization and project tracking. Again, big fan of it. How do I have this group of people all interacting across multiple platforms in a pseudo seamless way? Um, you know, there's always going to be glitches in how you run these things. But if you're constantly pruning your operations, ah, oh, it's so good. So good to have the entire team on the same page. Whether Susie in Unit 15 has you know, her door is not working and maybe she's not paying as well. And you can have seamless uh, communication between your boots on the ground guy and your manager and Susie. And it's like, oh my gosh. And they know where everything is as far as, you know, maybe you need the, the manager to pay for something with his credit card. Maybe you need to access some documents. Maybe you need to look at the lease, all these things. If they can get them quickly and easily and everybody's on the same page, um, I love it. That's business organization. Uh, and then marketing, tons to go into he uh, here. You may have seen on some of my Facebook posts, my free, uh, two free pizzas with every single rental that we have in the one facility, we call it our kind of test kitchen. It's a mid-sized facility and we actually have it completely paid off. And this facility, we you know, we're really focused on iterating on the process and understanding the different ways to market. So the basics, Facebook, pay-per-click, SEO, we do actually all do all that in-house. We have our own in-house pay-per-click, in-house SEO uh, team. And, and that SEO is not terribly difficult once you know what you're doing, uh, especially because you're using one of these white label platforms, one of these storage management platforms to make your website. Finally, uh, just manually posting on Craigslist, making sure your website has good uh, has a good workflow and is seamless to use. And then your old school marketing, putting out those, like I said, two free pizzas or one free month of storage. Uh, that's a banner that goes out front. Obviously, there's digital uh, presence with those um, marketing campaigns as well. And, and mailers, pens, um, we had a wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man uh, that was in our test kitchen. He was stolen within one week. So we decided that wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube mans without a full-time manager are not the way to go. We might try it again once we get a or once we get a full-time guy on, on one of our sites. Well, well, one of our sites is going to be having a pool hall in the front, um, and, and that'll hopefully bring in a lot of a lot of customers. There's a little separate building, um, and then we were looking at leasing that out to a business or something, uh, whether it be like you know a regular old boring business. But then somebody came to us and said, "Hey, we're gonna can we open a pool hall here?" It's like, "Oh, cool!" Now it turns our little self storage facility into the talk of the town. Uh, maybe we'll add, uh, that's our Arkansas one as well. Maybe we'll add a wacky waving inflatable arm filling tube man after the pool halls I've been running. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the basics. Uh, again, we talked about managing, financing, vetting, and finding deals. Please feel free to reach out to me. I guess this is a full, a full scale video. Reach out to me if you want to chat storage. And again, you know the reason I'm putting this out there. If your wife's a realtor, if you're a land wholesaler, whatever, uh, you're a doctor that's simply interested, I, I got time to chat, love to partner uh, on a deal. That's our our last deal, which is a ground up construction, uh, a lantern light capital deal. We, we had somebody that came to us and said, hey, I have this basically 37,000 square foot facility, a, a class A facility, very high, um, high rental rates locally, which is what you want. Uh, and they didn't really know how to get it across the finish line. So we partnered with them, and it, it's ending up being a really good deal for us. So please reach out anytime. PM me here. Uh, visit the Lantern Light Cap website when it's done in about a week. Come on, developer. Keep going. You got this. And uh, I wish you all the very best. God bless.